you are already familiar with the concept of acids as substances that dissociate in water to produce hydrogen ions. You have also learned how we can express the degree of acidity of a solution using pH values. What inference can you make from this finding? The hydrochloric acid solution must have reacted faster than the ethanoic acid solution as it contains more hydrogen ions in the same amount of acids and water used. Hydrochloric acid is thus said to be a stronger acid than ethanoic acid. The degree of dissociation or ionization of an acid is the fraction percentage of molecules which dissociates in water to produce hydrogen ions. There are no acid molecules left in the solution. All of them have dissociated into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The degree of dissociation of hydrochloric acid is 1 or 100%. This is because all the hydrochloric acid molecules dissociate in water to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions. An acid that dissociates completely in water is called a strong acid. Therefore, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Let us now look at the dissociation of ethanoic acid in water. The ethanoic molecules do not dissociate fully in water. A small amount of the ethanoic molecules dissociates in water to produce hydrogen ions and ethanoid ions. The dissociation is reversible, that is, the ions transform back to acid and water molecules. In the case of ethanoic acid, there is a net of 4 hydrogen ions formed for every 100 molecules of the acid added to water. Thus, the degree of dissociation of ethanoic acid is 0.04 or 4%. We say that ethanoic acid is only partially dissociated in water. An acid that is only partially dissociated in water is called a weak acid. Ethanoic acid is therefore a weak acid. The degree of dissociation of sodium hydroxide is 1 or 100%. We can therefore say that sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali. An alkali that dissociates completely in water is called a strong alkali. Sodium hydroxide is therefore a strong alkali. The amount of ions produced is very much less than the amount of ammonia molecules added. There are still many molecules left as ammonia has undergone only partial dissociation. The degree of dissociation of ammonia is very much less than 1. Thus, ammonia is a weak alkali. An alkali that only partially dissociates in water is a weak alkali. Ammonia is therefore a weak alkali. In this lesson, you have learned that acids can be classified into strong acids and weak acids. The strength of an acid depends on the degree of dissociation or ionization of the acid in water. A strong acid is an acid that dissociates completely in water to form hydrogen ions. Its degree of dissociation or ionization is 1 or 100%. The concentration of hydrogen ions in a strong acid solution is high. Examples of strong acids are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and phosphoric acid. A weak acid is an acid that is only partially dissociated in water. Its degree of dissociation is less than 1. 
the concentration of hydrogen ions in a weak acid solution is low. Examples of weak acids are carbonic acid, ethanoic acid, and citric acid. In this lesson, you have learned that alkalis can be classified into strong alkalis and weak alkalis. The strength of an alkali depends on the degree of dissociation of the alkali in water. Strong alkalis. A strong alkali is an alkali that ionizes completely in water to form hydroxide ions. Its degree of dissociation or ionization is 1 or 100%. The concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution of a strong alkali is high. The pH value of strong alkalis is high. Examples of strong alkalis are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and calcium hydroxide. Weak alkalis. A weak alkali is an alkali that is only partially dissociated in water. Its degree of dissociation is less than 1. The concentration of hydroxide ions in a solution of a weak alkali is low. The pH value of weak acids is lower than that of the strong alkalis. An example of a weak alkali is ammonia.